In this video, I'll show you how to use a soft slab to make a mug. This is the first tutorial where I'll be talking about slabs, and so I'm going to go over the different ways that you can make slabs, and I'll show you how to make a simple mug. But then please follow along with the other slab videos, and you can see other ways that you can use the same slab technique to make a whole variety of different forms. So to start making your first slab, just cut a solid block off of your piece of clay and pound it out using your fist or a mallet. You can give this to a consistent half inch thick slab in roughly the shape that you will want to end up with. Now we're going to switch to another method. This is the throwing method for making slabs. And as long as you have a relatively even thickness of a starting piece, you can thin out the slab further by throwing it down against your work surface at a 45 degree angle and the impact of hit it hitting the work surface will actually compress the slab and stretch it at the same time. So notice that I'm picking it up with the far edge of the slab and rotating it each time so that I'm stretching it in all different directions evenly. Also between each toss I tap the bottom edge on the table to kind of shore up that edge so it doesn't get too thin. This method takes some practice, but once you get the hang of it, you can make very thin, very consistent slabs, and the compression of this method actually makes them relatively strong. Now the third method is simply using a rolling pin, and often I'll throw a slab out and then use a rolling pin just to even out any thick spots afterwards. This is very intuitive and you probably are all familiar with this if you've ever made pastries. There's no special technique to this, but it is important to make sure that you're stretching the clay in all directions evenly. If you're stretching it more in one way than the other, the clay could actually shrink back as it dries and cause some warping that's unexpected. Once you have a thin and consistent slab, you can consider what shapes you'd like to make. In this case, we're making a mug, and I'm going to use this small food container as a template. Once you've done this a few times, you'll want to make your own templates. And I think it's nice to look at ready-made things like food containers as a starting point for how you could make different basic shapes. You'll notice in this kind of conical form, that both the bottom and the top edge of the container are curved or bowed like a rainbow. And when it's folded all together, that actually sits flat on the table and makes an even shaped cone. Once you have a template, you can simply trace that using your needle tool onto your slab. You'll notice it's important that the slab is even and thin because any thicker spots are going to dry at a different rate than the thin ones, and slabs are more prone to warping than some other techniques of working with ceramics. If you were to make your own templates at home, watercolor paper is a really nice material to do this. Not only is it more durable and thicker than normal paper, but it can withstand the moisture content of being pressed into the clay. Some people also like to use tar paper, although this is a little less fun to work with. Remember, this video is talking about soft slab construction. So if you'd like to use hard slab construction or leather hard slabs, I would just roll out or throw out your slabs and then set them aside to dry covered for several days until they stiffen up. And I would wait to cut out my parts until later. To dry these slabs evenly, you can consider using cloth to cover them instead of plastic, and this will allow them to dry without being totally exposed to the air. Now, knowing that I'm going to make a mug, I want to thin out the upper edge that will actually be touching my mouth. This thick rectangular sharp edge slab would not be any fun to drink out of so I'm going to bevel that edge in this case using a brayer but you could use your rib to just smooth that section out and thin it out a little bit it's going to be much nicer to drink out of that way 
Also, if you're going to make attachments, like in this case the base is going to be attached to the bottom of the curved slab, you can also consider beveling those attachments as well, either cutting a 45 degree angle around your slab or compressing it with a brayer or a rib. And that 45 degree angle is going to give you a little more surface area on which to score and slip. And it's also going to give you a less visible seam than just butting the two slabs together in a butt joint. I'm going to do all scoring and slipping and any other alterations that I can while the slab is still flat on the table before I attempt to move it. As soon as I move this soft slab, I'm going to risk denting it with my fingers or distorting it or warping it, all of which are going to show up as problems in the drying process or in the firing process. So the less I touch this slab, the cleaner and better my piece is going to turn out. Now it's time to actually move the slab, so I'm going to pick it up gently and press it in that seam directly onto the base. I'm going to try to use a light pressure so I'm not denting the slab with my fingerprints, but I need to press it hard enough in the joint so that that scoring and slipping actually holds. So this is working pretty well. Some people actually will roll their slabs out onto saran wrap, which gives a little more structure and support when you go to lift it but I think developing your hand's touch to be able to manipulate soft slabs without using plastic is, is a really good skill to have. So here I am folding it around and I can see that the angle that I'm getting here isn't quite the same as my original container. So I'm, I'm gonna have to lean these sides out and I may actually need to trim the joint so that there's no excess clay at the seam. Right now I'm just scoring those joints there so that the two parts will come together. And now I'm going to trim off the excess clay using an X-Acto knife. This would be a good sign to alter your template so that uh, you don't have excess clay like this. But there's always a chance you're going to have a little bit of distortion from your original template. So it's no problem, just go ahead and trim it off with an X-Acto knife. And now supporting with the hand on the inside, I'm going to press gently at that seam from the outside and just seal those two parts together. If you can't fit your hand all the way into the form the way you need to, you could consider using a wooden tool or something to hold down inside the form that you can press against. And then if your soft slab is stuck to the wearboard like, like mine is, I'm just using the rib there to pop the suction and, and so I can lift it off and rotate it. I'm going over that seam a few times, compressing it and smoothing it out just so there's no ugly sharp edges, things that I'll have to deal with later. And if you just want a basic uh, cup or mug form that like the template, um, this might be where you stop and you could add a handle if you'd like. Now I also want to talk about darting. Darting is another process that works specifically with soft slab construction. So 
Darting is a term that we borrow from the fiber arts, and it refers to cutting a section out of a, a sheet of material and then stitching those two seams back together to, in effect, collar in the form. So I'm cutting kind of a football shape or a leaf shape out of this side, and now uh, when I pull these two edges together, you'll see there's, it's going to dramatically alter the form. The bigger your darts, like this, uh, the more dramatic the alteration is going to be and the more distorted that form is going to be. So uh, in this case, I'm trying to really uh, accent the, the mug form and make it asymmetrical. So I'm making a rather large dart in, in this side. If you'd like to uh, bring in the form more evenly, then I would recommend using smaller darts at regular intervals all the way around in a symmetrical pattern. Now you can see that removed a lot of volume and created a, a very different asymmetrical form. I'm going to use that as an indication of where to put the handle because that cutout section from the dart might be a nice place where your fingers could tuck into the mug comfortably. So I'm going to attach my handle actually at where these points come out of the form. So I just rolled a simple coil and now I'm going to thin it out and give it a little bit of a shape with the brayer. If you don't have a brayer, you could use the rib or just use your fingers to form this, this handle. I am actually going to pull this handle a little bit. Now that I've got it in the basic shape that I want, I'm going to wet my fingers in the water bucket and just pull them along the length of that handle, trying to thin and smooth out the handle form the, the way that I'd like. Pulling handles is a really common way of making them, and it's employed by a lot of potters, but it does take a little practice to get the hang of it. So give it a shot and see what you think. Some people will tell you that it's more efficient to pull the handle after attaching it onto the form. So they'll actually attach the handle at the top and then pull it while it's hanging off of the mug form. That is a good strategy if the mug is already stiff and you can handle it without distorting it. But in this case, I don't think I can pick up the mug without uh, damaging the form itself. So I'm going to have to end up scoring and slipping both attachments for this handle and pushing it into place after I've fully formed it. Whatever method you choose to make a handle, it's important that you take the extra time to really sculpt it into the form that you want because just like the rim and the foot of a piece, a handle is somewhere that attracts the eye really directly. So 
not only is there a negative space between the handle and the body of the form, but there's also the edges of the handle, which can draw the eye from the lip to the foot, or vice versa. So the variety of handles is infinite, and I encourage you to explore all different kinds, but do just take the time to make sure that it matches the form in the way that you like. In this case here, I'm going to add a little dollop of clay to give kind of a thumb rest up at the top, which will hopefully just make it a little more unique. Before you walk away, clean up any sharp edges or kernels of clay with your sponge and give the lip an extra nice smooth finish. The lip of a mug is one of the few pieces of art that will actually enter your mouth, so it's worth taking some extra care to give a smooth and thin surface there that will be comfortable and easy to drink out of. All right, there it is, the soft slap mug.